Hey guys, uh, welcome to a very awesome episode of Level Up. I'm here once again with Andrew Parsons. How are you doing? Good, good. Good. Welcome. Um, okay, so oh, why don't you tell them why yeah, we're here? Yeah, sure. So today's episode of Level Up is all about Dream Build Play. And as you know, we've had the contest going until the end of December and we had our judging going on. And so now what we've got is the finalists are all selected. They're all available. We're going to go through them in this show uh, in preparation for the live finals next week. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So let's just jump into it. Well, actually, before we do, when is the live? The live finals. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So they're going to be next uh, Tuesday night. Uh, opening up GDC, so Game Developer Conference, if you're uh, not familiar, is like the number one developer conference for game developers uh, in, in the world, and it's uh, next week in San Francisco, and we're going to be down there all week. Both of us are going to yeah. be down there, actually, yep. uh, on the show floor, so if you're there, come and say hi to us. Uh, but, uh, but on the Tuesday night, opening up GDC, we're going to have the live finals. They'll be streamed online. In fact, the, the finals are online, so none of the teams will actually be in the same room as each other or the judges. Uh -huh. The judges are all going to be there in San Francisco with us, and the teams are all over the world. And they literally are all over the world. Uh, and I'll talk, talk about that as we go through the finalists. But you can watch and see how these guys are fared uh, in, in their final sort of presentations uh, and see who the winners are. And it's going to be next uh, Tuesday afternoon. If you go to the website, dreambuildplay.com, same website as you've been going to for the last six months, uh, you'll find at the top, and you can see here on my screen, there's a little add to calendar button. If you click that, it'll actually download an ICS file for you to actually put it into your uh, Outlook or other email client, and, uh, and you'll be able to track and then join us live and watch the uh, finals there. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to plug myself real quick. You do that. Okay. Um, so, as you mentioned, I'm going to be at GDC, and uh, I actually have a talk that I'll be giving. Nice. So, if you're interested in learning more about the Creators Program, um, and the talk is actually going to be very demo heavy, so hopefully nothing breaks. Uh, but if you're interested in learning, uh, that's my goal in the talk, is to take somebody who knows nothing, teach you what it is, and then show you, uh, we're going to focus on Unity. Um, so show you how you can get up and running, building your game for the Creators Program, um, either for Xbox or PC, but adding Xbox Live components into it through Unity. So um, I think that's Thursday. I Thursday want afternoon. Thurs okay. Yep. Thursday at 5.30, <laughs> I think, right? Around that time. Yeah. I just know I need to show up somewhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, come by and check it out, and then I'll be in the, the booth working the Creators side of it. Yeah, and I'll be in the booth uh, showing off the, the finals. We're going to actually have a, one of the pods at the Microsoft booth. We'll actually have all the finals there so you can actually go hands on and see some of them. Uh, and then uh, the other thing I want to mention in the finals uh, is we've had a few other sort of contests along the way, mm -hmm. right? I don't know if you remember the Developer Diary contest. Yep. Fantastic response. We had like 50 different uh, blogs and video series posted. That's a lot. Uh, talking about game development, which is amazing. Yeah. So the winner of that the winner of the Zola Prize, where Zola actually ha is going to fly one team to San Francisco to spend time with their venture capitalist uh, team to actually get some funding and stuff. That's awesome. Um, the Windows Store um, SDK Prize, that'll also be announced as well. So those three things will be announced during that final. So if you're in the running for one of those things and you haven't heard yet, that the reason why is because we're going to announce those winners next week as well. Awesome. So next yeah. week is going to be a very it, exciting it's week. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be <laughs> awesome. So why don't we do a really quick run through of those finalists? Yeah, that sounds great. Because, you know, Stacey, we had hundreds of actual submissions of games into the contest. It was actually incredibly hard. We had a, a panel of um, over half a dozen judges actually going through all of these games. I personally played every single game. Yes, every single one <laughs> of hundreds um, did, 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 did take a while. So I, I know we originally said, oh, we're going to do the finals beginning of February and ended up, ended up being like the 28th or something because we just needed to get that extra time in, make yeah. sure we're doing quality uh, assessment of those games. So of that though, we've actually selected three finalists for each of the four main categories, right? right? And we're going to run through it as they are on the website. So you'll see on the, on the screen, the uh, cloud category is first. That's the one with the big moolah, right? $100,000 is up for grabs for this one. And we have three games, Stellar Conquest, Ca Clash of Camelot, okay. and The Hadron Effect. One of the things you'll notice right across this, all across the 12 finalists, is we have really interesting um, uh, country selection uh, and genre selection of games, right? They're not just all shooters. They're not all puzzle games. We have like 
one shooter, one action game, one uh, role-playing game, one strategy game. It's, we didn't plan for that. It just happened that we had such a, a spectrum of games being created that we had all these different sort of genres represented, which was fantastic. Yeah. And then, as I said, with countries, we've had the Americas, US and, and Canada. We've got Western Europe and Eastern Europe and the UK. We've got APAC, uh, Asia, Asia Pacific, all, all represented in just 12 finals. Wow. So, so it's pretty, pretty amazing. So what I've got is I've pre-opened uh, all of these games uh, in separate tabs to make it easier for us uh, for the show. Um, so I'm just going to switch over to these tabs. So Stellar Conquest is this, uh, this recreation by a guy who originally wrote uh, the Trade Wars uh, 2002 game back in 86. Right, how many years is that? 32 years? Yes, 32. Right, 32 <laughs> years. Um, that's pretty amazing. And now he's back uh, building, building out Stellar Conquest. And you'll see here it's a, it's a space-faring sort of strategy, um, uh, real, sort of real-time game that, uh, that has a lot of uh, hallmarks of some of those classic space-faring trading type games. Yeah. So it's pretty exciting. And, and I'll uh, reiterate, you know, just like anyone else who was part of the Dream Build Play uh, contest, you can go to all of these pages yourself, look in the, in the catalog, and check out the five screenshots and the one video that they actually listed uh, as part of their submission. So you can check those out. The next game is Clash of Camelot. This is a, a port from an existing game. Uh, it's one of those um, time management games. You can see here, uh, a, a pretty typical sort of uh, uh, board. But what they did was they brought it into, uh, into the Windows uh, 10 ecosystem and they used Azure and, as part of their back end to actually do some of the processing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a really exciting way of modernizing an existing application, an existing game, uh, and bringing it into a different different platform. And if I remember right, they also ported this one to console, didn't they? This they did, the yeah, program. yeah. And in, in fact, you'll see up the top here, oh, yes. uh, underneath the name uh, Clash of Camelot, you'll see strategy, that's the genre, and then you'll see console, PC, and cloud power. They're the three categories they entered for this game, yeah. uh, and, uh, and they got selected for the, the cloud category. So the third game in cloud is the Hadron Effect, and this game is a really interesting um, uh, spin on what might happen with the Hadron Collider. It's built uh, in, in Unity, uh, you'll love that, um, <laughs> with Azure as its back end, uh, and it's kind of like a Half-Life type, like a, you know, First, part, first person sort of, sort of shooting type yeah. thing. A lot less shooting, a lot more sort of explore, exploring and figuring out what's going on. And so you can see here just how beautiful this game looks that these guys have actually worked on uh, and, and really made a, a, a really nice looking uh, experience. And it plays well too. So that's always a plus, <laughs> right? Um, and, it, and you know, as a reminder, as we go through these, remember that you know, the, the criteria were all focused on the game. We had fun factor was almost half of the score was fun factor. There was technical, which meant that you know how polished was it, how many did it crash, did it have any sort of glitches. Um, there was a business orientation just to see you know hey we want your game your game to be successful. What have you done to think about how you're going to make it successful? Yeah, things like that. They, that was our scoring criteria. It wasn't like hey did you implement Windows and Azure and did you do this? Like it was all about you guys and making sure your games are actually done in the right way. Second category, <laughs> PC, my favorite category, the Windows, uh, being part of the Windows team. And we have, again, it's such a good spectrum of, of games here. The Forbidden Arts, Ghost Scurry, and, and, and imp Imperatum. Hopefully I said that right. Uh, I haven't actually spoken to the developers in person to confirm that I've been saying it right. <laughs> so that, that's interesting. With the PC category, we had at least 15 games that could have been in this top three. Yeah. So I know like I've had a few other um, competitors reach out to me and say, oh, what was wrong with my game? Mostly nothing, right? Some of these games were, were fantastic on their own right, but you know, they, may, they just got edged out in here. And so what we're hoping to do is f highlight some of these other games as we go on. Okay. Um, you know, we're going to do a bit of a highlight reel of Dream Build Play in general, oh, nice. just to showcase some of those. Just yeah. like we're also going to try and uh, work with some of those developer diary entrance to actually really highlight some of those things as well. So let's look at these three games. Forbidden Arts is a sort of a... That's a cool graphic. Yeah, yeah. This, this was one of the most polished games we saw. Um, it has some, you know, still needs to be finished with some, some of the level design and things like that, but it, it is a really fantastic looking game. It kind of goes in between 3D and 2D. Um, you can see some of the 
um, this is a 2D aspect uh, of the game where you, you side scrolling, but it is in a three dimensional sort of uh, space. Mm -hmm. But then when you're in the outer world, when you're not actually in a level, that's a 3D world you know, that you might run around in and actually find the next thing that you want to explore. So uh, really creative uh, and, and in-depth, and uh, it was, this was one of the easy ones for us to sort of pick as a finalist. Um, and uh, really looking forward to seeing how they continue to uh, actually de develop some of those levels out. Ghost Scurry uh, is one of my favorite little time wasters. It's one of those things where you're a little spaceship dr driving in space and you just got to go left or right pretty much or yeah. jump. Right, and, uh, and the road in front of you forms as you go, as you progress. And so I've played many of these games on my, on my phone, uh, and, and now it was fantastic to have one on, on the PC. Um, and it has just a couple of little things in it that make it a little more difficult, a little more challenging. Uh, the games I've played on the, on the phone will be very much on rails. They'll just stay on that path, and if I turn left, it'll go left in the right spot. Yeah. Whereas this, you can easily go off the edges uh, if you don't turn in the right way. So it's, it, was a, it was a really cool implementation of this game, that, uh, style of game that uh, I've played in other places. So yeah. uh, this, this is a really cool one. Fun, simple, um, and that's another thing I want to highlight is these games aren't all um, you know, high fidelity 3D games. These, this is a good spectrum of what people have been building. Uh, Imperitum, there we go, did it first go <laughs> this time. For me, this looks like a a uh, futuristic Diablo. Uh, and so if, you, if I scroll down here, it's an action role-playing game uh, and you, uh, <laughs> walk, you know, go explore through the, the world just like you would in a Diablo game uh, and, and encounter different kind of um, creatures and, and things that you need to, to combat and deal with. Yeah. Um, and then because it's futuristic, it's kind of got a, a good blend of paranormal slash technical, um, not technical, uh, tech, you know, stuff that uh, you can really play with. So, a lot of fun. Um, this game's been uh, early access on Steam just you know, in the last six months or so, uh, and uh, it was great to see them ported over to uh, Windows as well. So, uh, I'm really looking forward to having other people play this game and tell me whether they liked it or not, because I certainly did. So, that's, that's we're halfway. I'm going to go to mixed reality now. now I'm not going to say I'm a mixed reality expert, so while I played these games, I definitely deferred to our mixed reality judging team on these, uh, and uh, they chose these finalists. That said, Racket NX is one, the one that I loved the most personally, <laughs> but hey, that has no bearing on the finals next week, I want to say, because I'm not part of the judging panel, right? <laughs> so I have no say in who wins. I just liked the, f the blend of what Racket NX uh, had, so let me just switch over to Racket NX. Um, it's basically a, a, a sp spacey sports game. Like, a, like think like kind of racquetball, uh -huh. um, but in a 3D space that's a little different shape to what a racquetball court might be, uh, like a squash court or whatever. And then you'll see here on the, on the screen all those hexes, like you can actually throw the ball to bounce in those different spots to get different scoring and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of fun. Uh, very simple, uh, sorry, st sorry, I shouldn't say simple, straightforward implementation of what a 3D space might be in yeah. this reality uh, and, re and really gratifying to actually uh, go hands on in that. The next one is Windland Windlands. Um, this is kind of like an exploration game where you're sort of flying through um, uh, a world uh, and, and that's the whole idea is you need to fly around and, uh, and just explore and it's just a beautiful, beautiful game that you actually get to be fully immersed in. Uh, and so that one I don't want to talk too much about. I, w I really want people to experience that one. Yeah. It's, it, you can't convey just how um, beautiful it feels when you're in that, in that space. And then the third one, flipping that around, not so uh, beautiful, actually really rough and, and, and tumble is uh, Prison Boss VR, where you get to go and be uh, a boss of a, a prison where you have to actually keep the uh, the inmates in line <laughs> and uh, explore their cells to make sure they're not, they don't have contraband um, and making sure you're making up all the right rules to keep them in line. So it's... it's, it's <laughs> so when you're the prison, is it the warden or are yeah. you another inmate? Oh, okay. No, 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 you're... you're uh, yeah. So that's, that's a lot of fun. That's pretty cool. That's yeah. a fun idea. 
So finally, the last category is the console category. This is another one near and dear to your heart, Stacey, yes. I'm sure, <laughs> uh, where we actually challenge people to implement the Xbox Live Creators program in their game and bring it over to, to Xbox. Mm -hmm. And we did have a really good selection here again. Um, and one thing I want to highlight here is you'll see, you know, there are one or two others maybe, but in here there's a couple here that are ports from other platforms. Mm -hmm. That didn't invalidate them for us, right? Because they're still going to the effort of actually bringing it into the Xbox. They had to implement a creator's program. They, they still did what the challenge intended, which was to explore and figure out how they can bring a game into that ecosystem. Yep. So they were, you know, and so they were judged on their own on mer own merits. Uh, and so uh, these are the three sort of finals we've chosen for that. So the first one is a game called Fighties. Uh, it's a two D platform fighter uh, in the vein of so many other games <laughs> on console like this. Uh, I was excited when I saw it, um, but Stacy, you've actually played this too, right? So did you want to say anything about it or? I don't know what to say other than I, I just I love this one. This one's one of my favorite ones. Uh, I <laughs> thought it was pretty fun and creative, um, yeah. and I like the graphics as well. Yeah, yeah. right. Super simple cartoony yeah. graphics, you know. Um, so I'm, I was actually I was really happy when I saw yeah. this had made it onto <laughs> the the three. Cool. And then the next one is Kingsguard TD. TD, you know, probably gives it away for a lot of gamers, which is a tower defense game. Oh um, my God! I hadn't been able to make that connection. Oh really? Okay. <laughs> So it's a tower defense game. Okay, no, I mean, I, that. I just didn't, <laughs> I didn't take TD and put it to tower defense. <laughs> um, so, so anyway, so it's a tower defense game uh, that uh, is from another platform, and they've ported it over yeah. and, and gone to that effort. This is another one of those games that actually was submitted into um, you know, the console specifically um, for creators program. So it's it's... A tower defense game, it's great, it's in 3D, um, and uh, definitely worth uh, checking out. And then finally, um, a very polarizing game in our judging panel uh, is Train Bandit. Train Bandit is a pixelated, what, what do we call it? Kind of I, like a I tapper? Yeah, I call it a tapper. A tapper. I don't know if that's the right it's genre. It's not quite a tapper, um, but it's, it's kind of in that vein where basically it's very simple controls. You just need to basically fight off the uh, other enemies yeah. while you're riding on a train. And you, it, <laughs> if I, because I did play this one, but it was a while back. It was uh, you had to push the right button in order to. Yeah, yeah, and not so be so you'll see it's very simple, but it's a lot of fun. Um, it's definitely a time waster without need, uh, needing too much brain cell capacity to very, actually. Yes, uh, and can be uh, a little infuriating. Every and once yeah, in a while. right. So <laughs> there are many games like that that, that uh, infuriate me as well. So that, that is the last game in the finalists. Um, so again, go to dreambuildplay.com, check it out, check out the finalists. Make sure you add the uh, invite to your calendar so you can actually watch the finals next week and find out who wins of those, as well as those three other contests. And we may have a couple of other things, surprises uh, in store for you uh, next week during those finals that uh, I don't want to give it away. <laughs> All right, well, this is awesome. I'm really excited. The best of luck to all 12 of you. Definitely. Uh, and uh, what, three other competitions? So yep. 15, I can do math today. Yeah, there you go. On top of that one. Uh, the best of luck to all 15 of you. Um, I'm really, really excited to find out who wins. Yeah, um, me too. Anything else for... No, I think this is it. So we may come back for another final wrap-up episode, but I do want to thank all of you guys who have uh, you know, dialed in and watched us uh, over the last six months as Stacey and I have talked to you about Dream Build Play, the contest. The Dream Build Play community is still alive and well, so you can still create your, your user profile, you can still create your game profiles for all the games you've created. I encourage you to do that and stay in touch with other people in the, in the uh, industry and the community as well. Uh, all right, well, I have a little bit of news to share. Uh, I oh. have recently decided to leave Microsoft. I'm going to move over to work for Unity. Um, so okay. Yes, very exciting. Um, I figure I can just help out over there. I'll still be in the game development space, so yeah. it'll be very exciting. Um, but I will not be hosting uh, level, level Up any longer. Uh, Katie Stone Press will still host it. Um, but it's been fun. I'm, I'm hoping that I'll still uh, pop on and do some guest episodes. And, and uh, I really want to get back into training and teaching, uh, not just Unity, but, but other yeah. stuff. I really love those episodes. So. Well, we'll on, on behalf of all the people that I work around uh, that work with you, you, know, you I'm sure you're going to be missed around here. You've got such a, a great presence in the, in the halls when we see you. So I uh, definitely miss you there. But uh, good luck in, in such a great partner of ours. Yes. Yep. Yeah, it'll be fun. Thank you. 
Um, okay. Well, uh, that is it. So uh, we will see you on Tuesday, and yep. then hopefully, for those of you actually at GDC, pop by the the booth, say hi, and then for anyone interested in developing for the console, stop by to either talk to us in the booth or uh, for the talk. Great. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.